Hey guys, Anthony, 4 Before Diesel. Just wanted to talk to you a little bit more about these EGR plates and stuff like that. Some other newer information and up to date and make sure we've got it all covered because I, once again, looking around the groups and pages and my text messages and stuff, um, I still see a lot of questions and it would seem people are misinformed or, you know, they don't quite understand or they're kind of new to gathering this information. So my first tip is hit the subscribe button. The second one is go back and watch all the videos from the start and just work your way through. Yeah, there's some older ones there and you can have a laugh and whatever. Slowly we get better at it and we're not the best. We're not here to be the best at videos. We're just here to give you the information, the facts from our experiences as it is, you know. So, the look, the EGR plate thing, right? So let's just go through a few different ones in the picture here. Kaon is a quality company and manufacturer and awesome people and that's why we recommend if you're going to get one you can grab one off them you can probably buy them off their website which would be obviously kon.com.au or um, off ebay they're about 10 bucks on ebay whatever you know that's easy boom buy now pay now bada boom bada bing now what i wanted to point out again was the plate so firstly i want to say this plate here all right this is for the 1GD, so that's the newer engine. I don't recommend or endorse putting this plate in whatsoever. I've got no idea about it other than what I'm about to tell you. So the first part is, many years ago when these engines came out, there was a gentleman that was feeding information back to me um, and he put a plate in. It probably started off with a no hole like that, but it was obviously a plate this size. Probably made it himself, I'm not sure. Started off with a fairly small hole, like five mil, which is, that's five, that's what it says, five and six. That's a seven, we'll get to these, right? So we're talking the 1GD ones, but starting off with a small hole, and what he did, pretty easy to put those plates in and out and slip them in and out. So I'll agree with these slip it in slots on this one and the little tab to hold on to it. And he, and he started off, I think it might have been a five mil or something like that. I'm not too sure, it was, it was about four years ago. And he went through a bigger five, six, seven, eight. What I remember is, 13 mil was the magic number, right? 13 mil. This is a 13 mil hole here, right? Does this pen work? 13 mil. It doesn't work. Well, I can see it, but you can't. Um, not ideal for drawing on pen with plastic. Um, so 13 mil was the size for him. I never heard anything further about it. He was really helpful offering that information. I figure if he had any issues, he would have let me know. So safe to say there was one car that that worked on. Um, I'm not sure with um, came on how they came up with a 13 mil if that was their own testing or from someone else or other people or part of maybe what I'd mentioned at some stage but I know there was a number of these in vehicles no problem okay so that doesn't mean it's no problem in all of them so when you do this sort of thing and it's new and if it's right on the edge with one vehicle or five it might work and with one or another five it may not right so there is at least someone we know of that has put this in and had issues with their, you know, whatever light coming on. And I'm not sure what code didn't happen to me. I haven't seen it. And, you know, limp mode possibly. So I'm going to recap on something else I've said before as well. I'm going to say it again. Really important this is. I don't care if it's a 1GD or 1KD or what sort of vehicle. In this day and age, everybody should have some sort of scan tool. Not an expensive, I'm not telling you to spend hundreds of dollars. Anything from as cheap as that EDS thing for about 70 bucks. You can get apps on phones, I think cheaper than that, and a little Bluetooth dongle that plugs in. Whatever works for you, have something so that you can read some data and read codes and clear codes. Because without a number, um, we can't help you. We need to know. The engine light doesn't tell it all. Lit up like a Christmas tree doesn't tell us anything. No workshop or anyone can help you or advise you or anyone on any of these Facebook groups can really help much without a number. Now I can take guesses, we can do guess gnostics, but without a number, we're sort of just guessing. Could be, you know, with a number, we can do a pretty accurate guess gnostic. You know, you can text me and say, hey, I've got that. Now, we're gonna get to more of these codes and numbers with talking about the other plate. I just wanna to touch on this one and say, early days as far as I'm concerned, you know, I don't um, buy, sell, or, you know, install these plates, whatever, um, I just, I'm too busy, I don't have anything to do with them. Um, I don't do EGR cleaning, that sort of thing, so you need to do it yourself. That's why we've got videos showing you how to do it. Do it yourself's the best way. We see a number of vehicles that have been worked on and butchered. 
who do you trust? We've got a number of people that we can recommend. So, you know, if you happen to be doing your injectors and you buy the injector kit all the time, you know, water pump kit, the wheel bearings, whatever, you can get into the VIP group, you can text me, you can post there, whatever, and get recommendations for our repairers, right? Um, or do it yourself, right? That's free, there's the information. You can watch the videos and just go and do it. So you don't have to do anything. Now, this, so this is, let's say, so far so good in a lot of vehicles. Um, hasn't worked for everyone. So percentage wise, really haven't got a number on it. Now, let's move away from this now. That's easy to put in. So if there's a problem, you can take it out. If you've got your scan gauge, you can clear the code and keep driving, right? It might happen once a week, might happen once a month, might happen once a year, I don't know. I haven't experienced it. I haven't heard from anyone that's experienced it. So I don't know. Guys, if you want to get one of these for your 1GD and slip it in, that's up to you. Check out the legalities, make your own decision. Um, you know, I'm not gonna, it's different you know, write-ups for each state and that sort of thing. So you need to work it out yourself whether what you can do and what you can't do, if reducing the flow a little bit is illegal or not, right? And whether you care about it, because most people seem to not care anyway. So we base our information on what works, not necessarily what's legal or not, okay? Now, moving to the 1KD, many years ago, people said, oh, no, you can't put a plate in there, and everyone's going on about catch cans and whatever. Problem is the catch can, as you know, it reduces the amount of oil, not the exhaust gases, okay? To two totally separate systems. If you don't understand, Google it. I suggest you go and watch my other videos. It's explained in other videos. Yeah, there's hundreds there. Work your way through. There's heaps of awesome information in the videos. I don't think there's a video that hasn't got something for you. So even people in the trade that know stuff come back to me and say, hey, that was a good video. I got this out of it. So... You can't put a plate with a no hole. Okay, let's just take a step back. 1KZ. Oh, I dropped the special pen. Um, the 1KZ, it's a bit different. You could probably put a full blank in, and I think that plate there probably fits. But of course, we don't do that, so I don't really know much about it. Back in the day when people wanted to sort out those, those, thank you, my helper, wanted to sort out 1KZ EGR issues, they just sort of like blocked the vacuum on so it didn't work, you know, and stayed close. So apparently you put a bull bearing or something. Some people like cut off a bolt, a bit of thread and stick that in the vacuum so it doesn't work. So, well, you can just do that. Then you know 100%, bada boom, bada being blanked off. That's a beautiful thing, I think, but not necessarily that good for emissions, but either is an old 1KZ, is it, right? So this is what I'm talking about. You know, it's your own moral compass you want to work out what you want to do you want to keep the old car or do you want to is it cheaper to crush it and go and buy a new one with a dpf he's going back to toyota deals with dpf problems regularly on the you know is that you know anyway so that's another story 1kd there's people out there with a five mil hole that reckon it's okay there's people out there with a six mil that reckon it's okay um, I would say it might work, it's, the, it's a, like it works in some cars thing, that 5 or 6 might be like 13 on that, right? 13 might work, say, for me, um, 5 might work for me, but then it doesn't work for you and you need 6. Where 7, where, where seven started was 7 works on most vehicles, and that's because we know a lot of people that put the 7mm plate in, and it works. Now... Since that, it's kind of snowballed, and there's it's kind of the done thing. Everybody puts the plate with a seven mil hole, okay? They buy it from eBay, you know, Kon Kon four x four, I think their name is on eBay, and so a bit of information about that seven mil hole. That's the one. It stays in there nice and securely. To get it in there, it's not easy. You've got to undo the front, both ends of the EJR cooler, the mounting bolt, and everything. And don't forget that. Again, watch the other videos. So you get the reminders about what not to forget. There's videos kind of like even how to put it in there, you know what I mean? So, um, now, the, there's questions coming up and messages about the plate. Oh, I've got a P0400. Right? So P0400 is the number. This is one of those numbers you can actually love because it's telling you that you're getting a low flow. To, through your EGR system. So whichever sensors it uses, and we've done a bit of homework on that, reading up, you know, this, you know, under certain parameters, when this happens, this happens, this happens, and this happens, that's when you get it. Now, the data is actually wrong because when, it tells us this is when it happens, but we look at the scan tool and it happens outside those parameters as well. So you can't always go by what's written on paper. You've got to work it out for yourself. And it's something we haven't been able to work out exactly 
the boxes that need to be ticked for the P0400. So in general, it is a low EGR flow, which is a good thing. It means your intake's gonna stay clean. It's nothing to worry about. If it happens once a week or once every three days and you've got a scan gauge there, 70 bucks, whatever EDS, you can just, well, yeah, P0400, smile and clear it, right? Don't worry about it. Or you can, when you put a plate in, you need to clean the, the um, EJAR system at least, the, maybe the back end of the EJAR cooler, make sure it's all functioning normally. Because as the vehicle gets older, when it's, let's just put an example, 10 years old, things aren't working like a new one anymore. It's been fed exhaust gases all its life. So things need to be cleaned and freed up and make sure they're working properly. There's no leaks, um, vacuum lines go on back correctly and all that sort of thing. Now, that usually, having it all right, is usually going to sort everything out. We know of dozens, if not hundreds of vehicles with plates in, with zero problems. Now, it doesn't mean it's not gonna happen one day, because as I said, these other components, they're gonna get older, they're gonna start not working properly, the little arm on the side of the EGR cooler, you know, that can get a bit stiff, or stick at one end or the other, or they can actually end up, they can be seized, and they need to be pulled apart and cleaned. So it all needs, you can't just put a plate in, you've gotta clean it at the same time. Whether you need to clean your manifold, look in other videos, I've said, you've gotta take the elbow off, have a look, and then see how bad it is, right? Refer to those videos. Seven mils to go, it works. Um, if we were gonna install one, the way that we've seen it done and know that it works is, the gasket that's on the, between the EJ cooler and the head, it stays stuck there. See this black stuff, it stays stuck there. This one, see how this bit's missing? That's the bits that stay stuck on the head when it was removed. So when you pull the EJ cooler back, usually this gasket stays stuck against the head. You just leave it there. The plate goes over the top. No, the hole doesn't block up. There it is there. It's not blocked. There's not, it's just black because it's exhaust. It's like the inside of a tailpipe. Your exhaust doesn't block up, does it? No, because it's just dry soot. It's just the, the soot from the exhaust, right? It's what you don't want on your intake in your engine if you want to look after your engine. But they're forced to do it to meet emissions, right? Um, so no, it doesn't block up. It goes between the EJR cooler and the head, not at the EJR valve. That's not right. If you do that, that's why you're having problems. That's why you need to watch the video. So... I don't know what else I can tell you about these plates. Heaps of people have got them, they work. If you're the one in a thousand or one in 500 or whatever it is that doesn't work, you've got some other issue with your EGR system that's not operating normally like all the others are, and you need to either sort that out, so you can spend a lot of time chasing that, and if you've got time and you want to do that, that's fine, make sure everything's right first. Um, but if not, if you can't be bothered with that and you're not fast, then you can, if you don't mind, just take the plate out, drill it out to eight mil. Try that, drill it out to nine, drill it out to 10, whatever you want, keep drilling it out until you don't get the P0400 because basically it's still gonna work because your EGR system's not working properly. So it was already not working properly before. So you, if you were to clean it, maybe it was gonna stay clean already it's, and it was just on the edge like it already had a seven mil plate, but it didn't. And by adding the two together, that's where you have your problem, right? Because you added something to there's a problem that was already there, but you didn't know. Okay, so I hope you understand. If it's operating normally, 7 mil works. If it's not, look, even probably 5 or 6, Pete, there are people out there with 5 or 6 mil, but I'm not going to tell you to put 5 or 6 because you're more likely to have an issue. And we know for a fact with 7 mil, this is the other thing we need to say, people are asking about if it stays clean. Mate. Look at the videos. They stay clean. The EJR valve stays alloy in colour. It works. Again, we're not telling you about the legalities of it. You need to work out and decide that for yourself. Um, once again, I just want to say thanks to everyone. We appreciate your business throughout the year. Um, it's that holiday time again. As I've said before in other videos, I generally only work school days and school hours, you know, being around, being there, done that, working the long hours and the long days. Don't need to do that anymore. I'm here to help, but try and keep it between school hours. And that means this time of the year, you know, if you can avoid it on school holiday, I'm around, I can do, you know, I can do stuff, but... I'd rather, I'm trying to take a break. I'm trying to be like everybody else, you know? It's Christmas, New Year holidays, day, public holidays, and you know, New Year's Eve and stuff like that. It'd be better not to hear from anything unless it's emergency. Um, or if you've decided at the last minute you're gonna do your injectors, whatever, you know. The best thing you can do is shoot me a text with your name, with your details, right? Not just a blank one with a long story. The longer it is, the less I'm likely to read it if I'm on holidays. I'm busy, I could be you know, up a hill somewhere. Boop, boop, text, if it's short, sweet, says urgent, mate, I really need, you know, whatever it is, I might be able to help you out. If it's just long and there's no name to it, mate, well, who's this, you know? Like, give me something. You, I've given you something, give me something back. Please, name, your area, your Prado or highlights, how many Ks, what year it is and what you need, 
and if you're really urgent urgent or just right you know you know not in a hurry when you get back and I'll go check the messages but this is the problem I get a lot of messages so they do slip down and if I quickly read it but I'm not in a position to read the whole thing then I lose the red dot it goes down and then more messages come it can get buried down there so if you don't hear from me if you don't hear back please text me again just a reminder mate you know no worries and I'll get get onto it straight I'm pretty good with stuff you'll find that most people will be able to tell you that best customer service you'll find anywhere and this is why I'm telling giving you this information so that you understand so we've got a good communication between ourselves and you understand the situation and I don't use messenger right so if you're watching these videos fantastic but then don't jump on Facebook and messenger me because I don't use messenger I use a phone that's phone calls right so if you want to buy parts whatever you, you call me up that's the personalized service and the way it's got to be done or you can just text me and I'll call you um, and the other way is text messages you can text me I'm not going to do texts and emails and messaging and too many different things too hard it's just the phone okay so text messages work always have they're one of the most reliable sources of information and I can manage that one the messenger thing it just gets buried again with all these yeah it just gets really messy for me that's how it works for me so that covers the EGR plate that covers the uh, it's that time of year kind of thing and we don't use messenger like always if you haven't already thanks for watching hit the subscribe more important information coming your way I hope I added something into this EGR plate video that isn't in one of the other ones and we've got other ones so like I always say go back and read those as well hey guys hope you had a great Christmas and all the best for 2020 thanks for watching see ya